Good day, everyone. Uh, we have uh, a guest here that you haven't seen before. Have you been on the stream before? Oh, I have been oh, on the stream. Oh, you have? No, that's right. Uh, we're here with Florian. He's our lead character artist. Uh, so we're going to go a little bit in depth of our character creation. So we're going to take a look at like the hunters um, and the spider and uh, just how, how that's done and how we get from you know point A to B, from concept to actual in-game asset. Um, but yeah, do you want to do a little introduction about yourself? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Florian. I'm the lead character artist on Hunt. I've been with the project um, since we got it here in Frankfurt. Um, right, so what does a character artist do? Um, we are basically the guys that um, model and texture all the you know characters, creatures, people, animals, anything of that sort um, you find in the game. Um, obviously to actually get a character to work, um, there's a whole bunch of other departments involved. We're literally just the guys who are modeling them. Um, then you also have, you know, from just the art side to get them to work, um, animators obviously to get them to move, tech art for the rigging, sort of, you know, actually being able for them to move, um, and obviously concept artists to, you know, design the characters. How um, big is the character art team? Uh, so right now we have uh, five artists, myself as the lead, and then we have a character art director who basically oversees all these departments. So that would be um, Abdenur, and he's in charge of well us as character artists, but then also the animators, tech art, concept art. Okay, well I guess uh, we'll just dive into what we have prepared. So uh, you have a lot of stuff prepared, uh, and I also know we're going to take a look at some of the programs that we use. Yeah. Well, you use, I don't use them, but um, that you use to create the characters. Um, Cool. So yeah, this is really going to be um, about the processes. Uh, we're going to yeah. talk about um, the design side of things, like designing characters, and then how we actually build them. And uh, yeah, as you already mentioned, let's start uh, with the hunters. Yes. Um, so you've already, you know, you're familiar with these guys. Um, we have the three tiers, tier one dudes, inexperienced, um, not really prepared for what they're getting themselves into. Um, white shirts. The white shirts. There you go. Um, then we have tier two, much more experienced, the veterans. They're much cooler um, and they are much more professional in, in what they're doing. Um, so yeah, these are sort of like villains or, or, or heroes in like a contemporary cowboy movie, if you want to think about them that way. And then <laughs> tier three, um, we have our real badasses. Like, these are the most experienced, the most um, ruthless hunters you can encounter. Um, right. Now, obviously, we didn't just come up with that. It um, was a bit of a process to getting to this point. Mm -hmm. um, everything basically started with us figuring out what is the archetypical hunter. Like, just figuring out, okay, what makes a dude that goes out into the swamp tries to kill monsters, what does that look like? And, um, well, this guy in the center, that would be it, right? Now, to get to him, like, it was a whole bunch of iteration, a lot of trying things, trying to figure out what are we actually trying to do here. Um, like, down here you see some very early ideas, which were probably a little bit too... Classy? I'd almost say. Um, maybe like that, but too I, fancy dressed for the bayou. I think it was also a bit too too generic and a little bit lacking in terms of, um, like just moodiness. Like it was a bit too, yeah. Like Hunt is a pretty dark and grim game, mm. and you know these guys don't really sell that. So um, the next step would have been to actually, you know. These guys here on the left, you know, they're not really detailed concepts. This is really just illustrations trying to get an idea, mm -hmm. um, get a mood, really. And, well, once we had that, once we knew what we were going for, so, you know, you have a cowboy here, but there's a certain kind of mystery of darkness to it as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. And um, basically, that was, once we had that, okay, we want to go for this. Now, 
obviously, as I said, okay, this isn't really fleshed out. This is just a, a, a sketch, pretty much. But already very close to the hundreds we have right now. Yeah, so I mean, the the idea was like, okay, mm -hmm. we had the, the feeling was defined at this point. So once we had this, okay, we want to go for that. But now it's about fleshing that out and actually figuring out um, what we need to do properly detailed, properly interesting, and, uh, you know, a whole bunch of variations for the characters in the game. Anyways, uh, the like the final iteration of this whole sort of archetypical hunter dude uh, was this guy in the center then, where, you know, we kind of figure out, okay, what are we doing with the with the clothing, right? It's kind of the time and era, but the fit is fairly modern, right? This is not really loose and baggy, as you would actually have had it back then. Mm. Um, like you have, in terms of the whole mysteriousness or, or mysticism or cult elements, uh, like the twos and, you know, all kinds of weird, strange trinkets that he's carrying around. Yeah, like gadgets, trinkets. Um, you don't really see much of his face. I mean, like, uh, this guy on the right here, that's basically also the, the final stage. Like, these are time-wise uh, pretty much on the same level. Um, it's you, you look at him and you don't really know, is this a good guy, is this a bad guy, right? So that's one thing we, we sort of wanted to sell. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing, like, he's just decked out with, like, all kinds of gear. Like, this is what you would see on, say, a modern-day soldier who's uh, going into battle. And, yeah, basically we, we combined, like, cowboy, certain coolness to him, some cowboys are not cool enough <laughs> but you know then we add the the supernatural element on top of that and then we deck him out with all the the gear and uh, equipment that he needs to actually go out there okay Sounds um good. then from there so now we have one dude well we know we want to have three tiers and within those three tiers we want a whole bunch of variations so so, so yeah, I'm just curious because like the first one is not an original like tier one hunter, right? Um yes. Um basically the way this worked, like okay, we we went from this mm. to these three guys, um, to sort of okay, we, we now have the idea. Now let's apply this to the three tiers. Um but obviously, you know, this was done. I mean at this point we were already building some assets, but we were not really a hundred percent clear as to what the the specific look for each tier would be. Mm. So, you know, it kind of works here, but the problem is once we started building a bigger library, you know, having more variations, um, we ended up having issues with just, okay, this is a bit too close, tier one, tier two. Um, so there were some changes after this point where we, you know, kind of made him a bit less um, formidable in a way, mm -hmm. um, but like the, the overall direction was very much defined at this point. So just to kind of give a little bit of a breakdown between the three, with the tier ones you obviously have um, you know fairly bright colors, very colorful to begin with. Um, you don't have a whole lot of um, like a long kind of cool clothing, it's really just a dude with a jacket and a pair of pants. Um, we start affecting the silhouette with tier two. Like if you play the game right now, you'll see most of the stuff. Um, you know, more of the the fancy clothing is uh, starting with the tier two hunters. Um, for tier two, what you get is much more muted colors. It's much dirtier, much more beaten up. Mm -hmm. Um, quite desaturated. I mean, there's only like a couple of small elements of actual color in there. And yeah, like the, the, the overall feel is quite a bit more dark and, and, and grim. And then obviously for the TS3 guys, we, you know, push that to Full the... Full mud. It's just yeah, this guy's dirt. living in the swamp. He's like a swamp rat and it's just everything is beaten up. Everything is ripped apart. Um, we are adding a lot of just, you know, tactical gear that he would need. We're adding, you know, trinkets and whatnot from his hunt. We're adding armor elements. It's, yeah, it's basically one step up from tier two and yeah. just kind of pushing it to the extreme. Um, okay, now 
once we had that, as I said, we could, you know, build assets with this. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, especially for TS3 hunters, um, we had an issue with, you know, a lot of the stuff, you know, you wouldn't find in the real world. Like for the other tiers, we took a lot of inspiration from movies, but then also just stuff you would find back then in that time in terms of clothing, but also just equipment, what people would have. So curious, was the clothing specifically from that like place as well? Like, did you see, did you notice a difference or was it just like in general, like? I mean, I think we, we tried to keep it sort of um, in the Wild West theme. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, if we find something that fit in, that kind of fit our, our um, visual language we defined, mm -hmm. we just use it, right? It was just like once we had an idea of where we were trying to go, um, it was easier to pick and choose uh, what would make sense. Um, so yeah, for the TS3 guys, obviously the problem is a lot of the things, well, you don't have them, right? Like we had to come up with uh, quite a few things. Um, just design them from scratch, uh, which would then be like this um, little demos here, mm -hmm. uh, where you have you know some armor you know that you find on tier 300s um, here as well, or we would get specific uh, paint overs for faces. So this is originally like some um, already uh, started off face model, and then one of our artists, um, our concept artists, did a paint over to really kind of set the mood. And make sure that this guy reads as a TS three hundred. Um, in some um, occasions, we also got like full outfit designs. I think this is like one of the TS three hundreds you can actually get in a game right now. This dude here. Yeah, close it. Um, so yeah, this was basically a lot of the stuff we did was basically derived off these guys, but we didn't really use this as a one to one concept. It was just defining the direction. But then for some of the more unique items, um, we got like specific concepts and developed a specific look um, to figure out what we needed. Um, right, so with that in place, we can actually build our hunters. Yeah. Now, one thing, um, you know, when building these, um, they're actually uh, fully modular. So these guys are actually um, made up of a whole bunch of individual... They're actually Ikea. <laughs> pretty much, it's just, uh, you know, you have individual pieces that you just combine together uh, when you need them. Um, we do this for two reasons. First mm -hmm. of all, it makes our life a whole bunch easier because we can, you know, reuse stuff. We have an easier time to create new variations like this. Um, more importantly, um, we need it to be this way uh, for us to be actually able to do... Um, Customization? Yes. Yeah. So having everything split up this way, you know, will allow us to swap stuff around and will allow you, know, you as a player to swap stuff around. Um, yeah, the thing is we'll probably not have this level of uh, granularity for the actual customization. Yeah, I mean, obviously. It's, this is a bit extreme, mm -hmm. but the idea is still to give um, the player enough options to really make unique and interesting uh, uh, looks for, for their hunter. Um, now, one thing you'll notice, and it's kind of obvious, is the bread and butter for us is um, really clothing. So shirts, pants, coats, whatever it might be, this is all where we get um, the most mileage from. So the question is, how do you actually build something like that? Now tell me, how will we build actually something like that? Right, so actually, well, I'm going to actually show that in the tool itself. Do, do, do. So what we're using here is a little application called uh, Marvelous Designer. Quickly hide that thing. Um, <laughs> so never mind the colors. This is really just to get the, the overall, you know, the, 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 the silhouette and the shape of the things right. So what is this? This is a um, fashion design tool. This mm -hmm. is actually used in the fashion industry to design clothing. Uh -huh. um, now we utilize this as both a design tool, but also as a modeling tool. The way this works is you literally create like a sewing pattern 
like you see here. Yeah. So, like you have pants, you have your shirt, you have the coat, right? You have all these little elements, and um, you know you create your pattern, and then you basically there you go. Um, you basically drape that on top of um, a character, right? So we have this this um, default mannequin dude in here, um, and the idea is to just drape that on him, and what it does is this is actually like real-time cloth simulation. So this is where the, oh, uh... the, the modeling part comes in. We can use this to create all the, the drapery, all the folds, all that stuff that traditionally you would have had to sculpt, we can create this way, at least as a starting point. So does this, I'm actually curious, compared to regular modeling, I assume this can cut a lot of time yes. and make things more efficient. It's uh, it's faster just from, you know, when you go from scratch, when you create something from, uh, from, from zero. Mm -hmm. uh, but then especially if you want to create variations where, I don't know, maybe you want to have a shirt with the sleeves rolled up. You know, this makes it a whole bunch easier because cool, yeah. you just, you know, you just literally take it and you move the sleeve up and there you go. Um, now... Let me quickly show you a little bit more how this works. Actually, actually, I had some issues before. Why doesn't that thing just freeze up if I went a bit too crazy? Um, let's just focus on this top part here, shall we? Right, so I've frozen everything else now, just this, this top shoulder cover thingy mm -hmm. um, is physicalized now. So, Oh, I can I can drag that around however I want, so I can get interesting folds and shapes. Um, but I can also, you know, if I so chose, turn this dude into a superhero by giving him a cape, right? Mm. Just takes a little time. <laughs> it was a bit heavy. This is a bit heavy. So how long have you guys been using this program? Um, Hunt was actually the first um, project where we started using it. Mm -hmm. uh, we evaluated it back in the day for, for Rise, but um, for what we were doing back then, it didn't really make sense. Um, but for Hunt, you know, with how just traditional clothing heavy the game is, mm -hmm. it just, yeah, it was perfect for that. Um, right, so whatever. This is not the prettiest thing, but just to give you an idea of how this works. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you just do your thing, you, you adjust the pattern how you want, and then you basically simulate it on top of your character. Um, whee. I can also, this is gonna probably end horribly Can now. it also like automatically drop based on the model that it's wearing? Like, will it, like, you know, let, let's say you, you would leave it and something would naturally fall, like... No, if I if I remove the avatar now, okay. I mean, I can quickly show you that. If I just delete everything out of the scene mm. except this one piece, um, it would literally just. Yeah, I did actually not plan for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, this is actually. I'm obsessed with this. It's actually <laughs> interesting how they. Well, let's see All what right, happens. Um, the... Let's see what happens here. Oh no! I need to actually. I should probably just actually. <laughs> making this more difficult I'm, I'm just making a new thing here. Oh, this was a bad idea because this is gigantic. The problem is like, um, like the surface area here. The more surface you have, the more complicated the thing gets because yeah, there's mean, just more, more stuff to simulate. Right? Um. Okay, so now it's trying to. Oh, I just added a new piece here, and it's not trying to figure out. Okay, let's add that. So yeah. I just put that there, and now it's just merrily falling down. Falling, it doesn't yeah. do anything yet, but the moment it crashes down... Oh, there you go. It's almost like it's rubber. Um, I might yes. actually... No. Nah. Oh. There you go. So, yeah. And, well, off it goes. I dragged <laughs> it off to fly off into the sunset. Um... 
basically this is what we use to do a lot of our of our clothing in the game right like we don't do the final thing with this but you know we do the starting point from here on out mm. um like some more stuff you can do actually let me reopen this phone now nah, whatever whatever <laughs> stay in here um if i change say the physical attributes of the actual fabric like you can do that where like right now it's some some kind of uh, canvas material mm -hmm. i could change this to say well let's go with an island there we go maybe a nice silk it will just have different physical attributes and you know it will ah, have different drapery okay, right yeah. so you get much more fine wrinkles and it's also bugging out mm. This is a, probably a bit of a heavy scene, Ugh. Um, but I could also tell it, hey, what if, um, you know, instead of uh, nylon, we go with like really thick leather and all of a sudden, you know, it becomes much heavier, you know, it's, it drapes differently. You can, you can use this to um, really define the look and, you know, fine tune the look of, of whatever it is you're because doing. Because did you need to do more research before in the past of like how materials would fall? Obvious, I assume. Um, no, I mean we just look at how any you know how a particular thing is um, made, right? Like what that um, actually consists of, and then we basically you know we either uh, if there's a preset we'll use that, or we create our own mm. to kind of you know get the 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 right look. Um, now one other thing I can mention here um, is you have this weird cone shape, right, where the coat is flaring out like this, which is why why are we doing this mm -hmm. um basically the reason is we have real-time cloth simulation in the game and the idea is that basically everything from here on out like just like mid torso downwards uh will be um simulated in real time mm -hmm. um so for that to work properly you want to have something fairly smooth and even like this so we kind of put this code in there for the for the code to rest on nicely and then um when we actually get in the game that will then be properly simulated um in, in real time uh we're not going to get this level of fidelity where you really get like um nice individual folds but you know it's not needed for that like we just need like bigger deformations bigger shapes to to um you know sell the movement um yeah that's like basically how we start out garments now in terms of actually you know doing the patterns um what we usually do is we try to find um you know real life uh, equivalents mm -hmm. and then we modify them to our needs so we literally look for for sewing patterns we find something that makes sense for us um or we kind of look at pictures of of uh, clothing from the time and era and try to figure out okay how was this built then we replicate that and we modify to to um, kind of have to the fit that we we want to have on our hunters. Okay. Um, cool. I like it. So that's marvelous designer. Now, what you get from that is something like this, right? Some of them, you know, you'll have some more detail in other garments, but less. Either way, it's probably not enough, right? You start out with something like this but you want to take it quite a bit further than this so the next step for us would be to actually um go into zbrush which is a sculpting application and you literally go in there and you start adding detail right you you sculpt on this like you know clay just on a computer and just refine this iterate on it until finally you arrive on something at something you know that looks the way you want it to look Obviously, um, all of our clothing, you know, these guys are not, you know, going out of a shop, putting it on, and that's what you see in the game. It's wrapped up. Basically, we want to give everything a bit of history. We want to make it look a bit beat up. So having this uh, extra detail pass mm -hmm. is, you know, you know what it takes to, to get that look. Now... Um, so I'm just curious, like, if this is made in Matrix, they can make that in real life, technically, right? Um, not strictly. I mean, you could probably derive, uh, you know, something you could actually tailor from that point. However, especially the way scenes work, um, in Marvelous Designer is quite simplified. 
Okay. So you, you would have to, you know, iterate on top of it if you would actually want to, you know, do a code like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Uh, maybe one day someone is uh, very talented and can make them in real life based on seeing uh, like the patterns. Um, right. Um, okay. So the next step, the thing with this is, so we did all the sculpting and now you have something just immensely like detailed, right? There's a, a, a crap ton of polygons. Um, you can't put that in the game. Well, you can put it in the game, but it will make but it run. That's your budget then, right? Yeah. So you have an empty level and a coat, and that's it. <laughs> so we need coat to coat the game. Coat, coat hey, showdown. That we can, I don't know. <laughs> um, but no, for for actually, what we you know what we really need is something much more efficient, much more simplified. So you know what do you see here? Like just this this wild structure on top of this thing. Um, it's just a couple of thousand points kind of describing yeah. um, this object now, as opposed to probably millions and millions in this Every, case. Every like, wrinkle, yeah. Um, so this is sort of our high poly model, and this will be the game model. Um, obviously, well, we don't want to waste all that detail. So we need to transfer all that detail over to texture to you know, actually properly see uh, all that that work that went into the asset previously. Um, well, once you've done that, what you have is pretty much a nice gray thing that kind of looks like a coat. It still doesn't surface-wise. Mm. You know, you have the folds, you have the look, but the main shape is there, but the rest is it's still not really fabric, right? It it's you know. You need to kind of, you know, now add color, actually add textures to this thing. Mm -hmm. So the way we do that is we use a tool called Substance Painter. And if you watch the stream with Alexander Asmus for the weapons, you might have already seen this program. Oh, he's the master here. Like, he's really, really good. Uh, Substance Painter and Substance Designer, he's pretty much like, yeah, the go-to guy here at Crytek. When it comes to that so yay, Alex. Um, anyways, um, just to give a quick recap then of, of how this thing works. Um, eh, another heavy file. Yeah. Um, do you do the rotopology natural, uh, manually? Um, the retopology? The retopology. For the most part, yes. I mean, there's some assets where we'll maybe... Um, you know, utilize uh, something actually out of Marvelous. In some cases, we might uh, utilize something out of um, Setbrush, but for the most part, it's just e easier and more efficient to do it manually. Um, like what I like to use is Topogon. Um, other artists like to use 3D code. It depends on, on personal preference, really. Um, right, so there we go. Uh, Substance Painter. It's already looking more like a gut. Um, this is the final version, so let me hide everything just to give a quick uh, breakdown of how this actually works. So what this is, so basically you have your asset here, you can have different lights, you can change the light, and what you're doing is you're basically dropping on... Um, different layers of... It's, it's not just color, it's literally like dropping on materials, like substances. Thus, Substance Painter. Um, <laughs> the the idea is really you have like a library of you know whatever it might be. You could have different metals, like you see down here. You have brass and 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 all kinds of fabrics. Uh, but then we also have mud and you know mm. blood and whatever it is um, that you can utilize to layer up um, you know the texture and uh, build something really interesting. And the thing is, like this isn't just color, as I said. This is also like um, how it reacts to light. It also affects how. Um, so it has depth. Yeah. It yeah. also like some of these also come with like little wrinkles or or little details of their own, like um. I show you that one here. So yeah, like you see those little holes here. Yeah, it's. Uh... Like they they're not just flat, right? There's there's some 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 depth to that. Um, so basically what we do is starting from something um, reasonably flat and simple where it's just like a base color. Yeah, like a... Oh, that's... 
it's just you know that's not very interesting um but then you know you start building it up right so you add you know a little bit of wear and tear and you know more wear and tear and some seams and some stitches you just basically step by step you build this thing up similarly to what we had with the with the actual sculpting where you know just you take it from basically the very big picture and you work your way through it and get more and more detailed. So do they add any more like polygons if there's details? Ooh, no. This is all just texture work. This is literally you're just, just throwing stuff into um into actual textures, right? So at the end what you actually get out of this thing is just a couple of image files. And then you apply that uh, to the model in the game and uh, yeah you'll get all these uh, little things that you just painted on mm -hmm. so just to show you there you go so we you know adding some dirt here or or some you know little oil droplets the holes I already showed you basically the idea is to just you know detail this thing further up than, than than what you had and you know just make it look more interesting again the idea of, of weathering that asset and making it look as though it's been worn for a while um yeah that's pretty much um it like then at the end of the day you end up with your um with your final thing and mm -hmm. that then goes to to tag art to uh you know get implemented into the game and uh, yeah basically every single asset we have in the game goes through this process um there's some deviations on it like how we do things sometimes we'll texture the high poly model sometimes we texture the low poly model um sometimes you know we do some texturing in photoshop as well it depends right but for the most part this is the 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 the, the, the workflow we utilize um okay let's talk about faces the hunters um so how do you you know get something like this um basically if you want to do a face for us the starting point um like we have obviously a whole bunch of faces so if you want to start a new one uh, what we usually do is we take one of the existing ones and start building on top of that. Okay, I had a quick question, just doing it so I don't forget it. Uh, any tips for ZBrush noise workflow for fabrics? Before you... um, at this point, I wouldn't really bother with it. I would really do anything that isn't memory faults. I would literally do it um, in, in substance. Um, I would just basically it gives you more depth and more um, just uh, it gets you closer to the final asset uh, rather than than you know trying to do all your uh, fiber detail all your your fabric detail in ZBrush and, um, and then you know taking it from there and you know texturing it from there. Um, phases. So we basically start out with a with a you know existing head um that we you know start modifying to kind of you know we'll usually have like an array of, of of references where we might be looking at you know maybe actors or or um mma fighters whatever it might be you know we we, we have some references now we're obviously trying to do exact replicas you know exact um portraits of people here the idea is to just get a certain feel right get certain characteristics mm -hmm. um and you know give that to our hunters you know to get interesting looking um so which, characters. which were like for example some actors or people that you guys <sighs> took... a whole whole bunch i mean i think we your favorite i mean if there is even a favorite but... i mean you obviously have to go with clint eastwood at some point i had a feeling <laughs> i had a feeling <laughs> um yeah, I mean, it, it really depends. I mean, sometimes we also just go through, um, you know, some some photographs of, of, you know, just black and white photographs, like some art photographs um, of really interesting um, characteristic faces. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we find something that we feel makes sense. And, and yeah, we, we go with that. Um, yeah, but once you have sort of your, like, your general idea where you want to go, um then it's just okay you take your your starting points and you start 
you know, modifying. Um, this is literally just a question of, I mean, I can, I can show that a bit later, but again, it's like an iterative process where, you know, you go through the, th through the, through the steps and you slowly start building it up, right? So... What an angry looking man. Uh, I'm gonna have to, these guys be a little bit grim. He kind Not of reminds me of an elf. I don't know why. Like that one, just like... No, he's a little, very sharp featured yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. No, that was the idea to have some, you know, we have, we had at this point, like, I think when we made this guy, we had a lot of characters that were very um, strong featured, like very uh, heavy jaw and, uh, you know, quite, um, you know, tough looking guys. It also that... seems that he has a broken nose. Yes. Like, there, there's always, like, we, we try to give these guys similar as, uh, as with the clothing and whatnot. We try to give these guys some history, right? So the idea is always to build it up and and you know not just oh here is a dude off the street we want to give this guy a bit more character and actually exaggerate it a little bit so once you have something that you're kind of happy with in terms of shape you know again going from this dude here you know you go through the process um then again you want to start detailing it up right and yeah you all kinds of you know, poor detail and, and little wrinkles and whatnot um, to really get to the final asset in the end. Yeah, some scars here and there. Yeah, it's basically like once we have the shape, as you said, and yeah, it's it's like about giving. So how long does it take to get from like the basic model to that much detail? Um, for us, usually we are trying to do a face in... I would say about a week from start to finish, but this also includes textures and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of the, the timeline we're aiming for right now. Um, right. I can maybe quickly show you a little bit of how this actually works, um, just to demonstrate that a little bit, because right now all you're seeing is just stuff happening. Uh, there we go. So. So on the on the larger level, like you just literally, well, this is a sculpting application. So you just you know you take stuff and you push it around, and this is a bit awkward with mouse and keyboard, but whatever. Because <laughs> uh, you normally use a tablet for this. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like everybody, uh, we we use tablets um, to 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 actually do this uh, all this sculpting. You know, it gives you nice pressure sensitivity, so you can actually really like painting. Uh, it's much more closer to 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 the real deal, uh, like if you were actually working with clay. Um, so oh, there you go. You would you know just slowly start building up features here, right? And you know modifying that, however you see fit. You know to kind of get it to the point mm. where you um, hit the look. That you want to achieve. Someone asked why you're not using scans. Um, we do actually utilize scans uh, to a certain extent, um, like for some faces. However, um, it ultimately it's always a bit tricky to get really like super super uh, like slightly exaggerated faces. Like we want to have something that is a bit over the top. Yeah. And like some of the faces that we utilize as starting points were actually scans, but then we do a whole bunch of modification on top of that to get to uh, where we want to be. Um, anyways, and then yeah, for the detailing, we can do that in multiple ways. Like, you know, most of it really happens with, you know, we have um, detail brushes that we can just sort of stamp onto a character's right so we have like some kind of poor detail here that I can just drag on or maybe not with symmetry uh, that yeah. I can just drag on and uh, you know detail this guy up until then in the end you know I, I get the final thing a lot of this is then also you know just some of the wrinkles you go in and oops <laughs> that's a very deep break. you know you kind of make it carve that in a little yeah. bit and you know step by step Worked this up. Um, 
It's really interesting because, like, whenever I look at this, because I, I feel like, oh, I could have so much fun doing these things. Like, oh, it's a lot of fun. It seems like, also, like, really, very really cool. therapeutic. Therapeutic? Therapeutic? Am I saying that right? Therapeutic? Yeah, therapeutic huh? work. Like, just, ah, I'm just going to apply some textures, you know, do some details, yeah. just relax. <laughs> I mean, we're not necessarily going through this process for every single face because that would just be wasteful, yeah. right? Like, a lot of this stuff will have on a layer and then we can utilize it between phases we do so a lot of the the, the work if you're doing things on a new phase would be to you know do the, the bigger changes where we are yeah. adjusting the the overall you know the shape of it uh and then we apply all those details to um to that uh final you know rough shape. yeah um points now for textures, um, it's you know combination of again using stuff derived from scans um, and then also some some hand painting where we have uh, you know all kinds of, of detail maps that we can throw on there. Um, basically, you want to make sure that obviously everything corresponds to your um, actual details in here, um, and basically it's like something fairly large scale and then ultimately you have uh, something really fairly um detailed and and um and really color. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah that's the process again like a, a lot of this um we basically we have our base and then we utilize this between all the faces we're doing mm -hmm. um right Let's talk about hair because that's also part of this process. Yeah. Um. The way this works, obviously, is a whole bunch of individual, like hundreds of thousands of individual hair. How are you gonna do that? I mean, you're you're the one that's gonna explain <laughs> that. How are we gonna do that? Uh, basically, what you do is you just fake it. So what we have is a whole <gasps> bunch of fantastic planes. The hairs lie. It's just little surfaces with little pictures of hair. And then you have a mask which tells it whatever is white is visible, whatever is black is not visible. And that way you can turn this thing into an actual hairstyle. Um, now, we don't necessarily um, place all these out by hand. Um, Can you just like draw them on? Like with just like that it automatically fills it like you were to populate trees or something or foliage on like a map? No, what we do is we utilize an actual um, like a, a grooming application mm -hmm. um, in 3D Max, 3DS Max. Um, basically what this is, what we're using is a, a, a tool called Ornatrix. Now this is used in the VFX industry to to actually do grooming and do um, hairstyles for for creatures like for pre-rendered movies and effects. Yeah, or... like the Harry Potter monsters or whatever. It's now Jungle Book. Oh. They have animals in Jungle Book. Actually, I haven't seen that one yet. I it's... haven't either, but I know uh... that it has. <laughs> There you go. I mean, it's a live action. I mean, the new the Lion King. I think that will be really good. The live action. They did a live action Lion King. They're going to make one. Oh, okay. I thought they had already. Trailer. It well, looks very, very good. I did not know that. Well, put it on my list. Um. Anyways, we're not going to that crazy amount of detail. We're basically utilizing this to kind of block out just roughly what we're trying to achieve, mm. like get a visual reference. Um, uh, yeah, CG, sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> Live action. Uh -huh. I'm watching too much anime. <laughs> uh, okay, so right now, okay, just to give a little bit of explanation, what we have is a grooming tool where you comb stuff and cut hair. And do all kinds of other fancy stuff. It's getting a bit ball balling there. And these are basically just the what is called guide hairs. So these are uh, literally just sort of the control hairs, mm -hmm. and then everything in between, like all the hair that would be between, oh, okay. you know, two 
two two guys would be would be interpolated. Um, so let's give him a nice bad hair day here. Um, and there you go. We fill that in. Fresh and out of bed look. Not the best look, but you know it works. I think especially with the it's beard. A look. With the beard, I think he can pull it off. Okay, can we do it to the beard as well? Something, something crazy. Make the beard even crazier. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, why not? We're, well, we're going see. wild. Let's see. Let's see. So. Wee. Well, it's so weird to see him from like the the side profile. <laughs> just everything exploding now. It's exploding here. It's great. Um, oh yeah. This is this is this, this is, is a really look. Good. Like <laughs> this is definitely a look. <laughs> now obviously this is no good. Like all of these are right now individual. What do you mean? Great. No, no, no! I'm not even talking about the visuals. <laughs> I mean, we, th this is this is perfect. We'll add this to the game. No, but in terms of actually like usability, like this isn't those little planes here, right? This is still yeah, yeah. like uh, tubes. Well, what we can do is we can just simply tell it. Well, instead of tubes, put planes here. Then we make these a whole bunch thicker, a whole bunch thicker. Um, we reduce the amount. And reduce it some more, mm -hmm. and then you start having a starting point, right? Now, you know, you still need to refine this, you still need to put quite a bit of manual work into this, but it's still better than trying to go in and, you know, place everything manually. Yeah. Um, like for some hairstyles and for some areas, um, you don't get around that. Like uh, in some cases, especially uh, towards the edges, um, you really need to do uh, it plane by plane, noise. but for bigger volumes, it's you know it's easier and it's a bit more you know straightforward to do it this way. So it, I assume because like obviously there they seem to have more ball guns, like that becomes less as well with like this or yeah no like what I did literally now is um, just less space. I can you know I can just go in and basically tell it hey where is this. Do, 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 do. There we go. I can just reduce the amount of actual hairs, right? Or yeah. planes in this case. Um, all right, takes a whole bunch of them out. Um, I can also tell it, hey, I want to have less and less and less detail oh, in there. Oh no. Um, I can stop. So you know, this is a pretty iterative process, and you know. It, you know, it, it's a nice, uh, you know, way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Again, like this does not save you from having to do a whole bunch of manual work on top of it. But I still, you know, prefer this over over doing everything manually. Someone asked, how much hair do you need to find a mesh for a realistic look? Uh, sorry, come again? How much hairs do you need to plan on a mesh for a realistic look? Well, I mean, again, like what we're doing from, from our end, um, is we're just like we're faking it, right? So for this, you know, we're just having planes, right? So it's you know, it's a, a whole bunch of planes. It depends on the hairstyle, but it also depends on how many hairs you draw on the planes. on the literal texture. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you were actually gonna utilize this tool to make a proper proper hairstyle, well, I think it's about a hundred twenty thousand hairs um, for the for hair, and oh. I think. It's green screen. Are we are we bugging out? No, it's like showing the. Mm. I think the camera moves a little bit. Okay. We're um, done. We good. And you know, done done. Like I think it's sixty thousand uh, hairs for beard. Don't quote me on that. Uh, that's the that's the numbers I have in my head right now. Um, yeah. So like you know, I would then literally go in if I wanted to make a properly like BFX style hairstyle. Uh, you know, increase that a little bit more. Um, yeah. Uh, someone asked, how long did it take you to reach the level of art, uh, quote, quote, where you're at right now, and is 3D art harder than 2D slash digital drawings? Okay, like, I've been doing this for, like, I've been working in the industry for about 10 years now. Um, what is harder? I mean, like, 3D is in a lot of ways more technical. Mm -hmm. Um... 
so you know it, it's two different things like within artistry like there's some differences there now obviously you still need to have quite a bit of um, artistic sensibility to do 3d as well um, it that's a tough one. I, I, I feel like it depends also like in on how you know you can specialize. So it's like, I mean, you have to train because like drawings get better the more you do it, and like trade I I guess the same. So it has their own. I know, of course. I mean, you basically, yeah, you need to you know just do your thing and you know work at it, and and ultimately, yeah, you know. And that's actually a good point, because, like, someone says pixel art is hard as well. For me, like, because, like, I can draw, but I cannot do pixel art because I don't have the knowledge. For me, that's super mm. hard, but it looks so cool. But I'm, like, I feel like if you learn that, like, you can get good at anything as long as you just practice, 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 and do things. I think it's, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, there's there's always the difference between, okay, like, like sort of the, the workflow, like the tools yeah. that you're using, and then the actual artistry, right? Like, there is... Like a lot of 3D is very much tied to tools where, oh, you know, right now we looked at a whole bunch of different applications, right? Whereas you could argue that somebody who is good at drawing, all they need is a piece of paper and a pencil, sure. Um, but as a 3D artist, you still, like, ideally you are in a position where, you know, you build up uh, a certain level of, of, of skill that will carry over to different applications and different uses. Yeah. Um, right here, let's talk about bosses. Let's talk about the spooter. The spooter. Oh, no. let's actually go through the entire presentation. Yeah. Um, let's just start all over again. There we go. Spider. Yeah. Um, okay. How do we come up with something like this? Um, I mean, how do how does someone come up with something like this? That is a good question. <laughs> what have they been using? Like, like when we are doing a new boss, usually what we do is a brainstorming meeting. So there will be a general idea for gameplay and a general idea for you know visuals that has either been discussed beforehand or it will be. The result of the very very first mm. um brainstorming meeting you just okay this is the very very rough wake direction we want to go into now okay not a new boss this is the concept art of the spider this is basically showing how we got the, to the process of, yeah. of of where we how we how we got to the spider like this was okay i'll, I'll just go through it <laughs> um when we did the spider, we knew we wanted to have something um, insectoid. So multiple legs, um, kind of creepy, as creepy as possible, actually. Mm. And also have um, some human forms in there. So actually have uh, limbs and, and you know, arms, legs, whatnot to, you know, well, make it even more disturbing. Mm -hmm. So that's what you see up here. These concepts were the very first ones we uh, we started with. That was literally the first ideas uh, visually we came up with. Um, so you have you know this, this whole theme running through. There is some stuff that works better, some stuff that doesn't really work. Like kind of looks more like a frog, the middle left one. Yeah, some of them look a bit imbalanced and you know might not be super agile. You know, which is something that we actually wanted from the boss. Um, then, you know, like this is literally just a, you know, kind of goblin dude uh, chilling on the wall. But the, the idea was like, hey, we want to have that. We want to have that boss be super, like, um, you know, Fast. good with, with, you know, just going on the ceiling, going on the wall, uh, all over the place. So it becomes um, erratic and hard to predict where it's going to go. Um, you can't really do this with some of these designs. However, like this guy, that was interesting. Um, so I think out of the first, um, I mean, obviously this is just like a, a mm. selection of, um, you know, what we did. There was a whole bunch more concepts and a whole bunch more discussions and a whole bunch more ideas. Um, I'm just, you know, giving a, a rough overview. Um, this guy here, 
um, was interesting, right? Like this had some some interesting feel to it. Was fairly creepy. Now, couple of things. Um, first of all, the human element was a bit too toned down. Like, okay, you have the arms, you have like his legs down here, but ultimately it wasn't that wasn't strong enough, right? That kind of just blended into um, this whole mess of legs and and insect shapes. So we wanted to push it a bit more. Um, also, from a gameplay uh, side, uh, we wanted to have a, a sort of a weak spot, like a, a focal point. I'm not even sure whether at this point it was meant to be a weak spot. It might have been some, some other gameplay uh, reason why we wanted, well, this down here, rip, yeah. like the exposed lungs in the ribcage. So this was then the next evolution where, you know, we went from this guy to this guy where, you know, it's much more... Uh, the, Visible the, and clear. Like the, the human forms, the human elements became much more, you know, dominant in the in a way, in, in the design. And also like the uh, the lungs became, you know, became an, a thing now where, okay, we want to have that visual element in there. Um, now, the problem with this uh, concept was that it was a bit too symmetrical. Like, it looked fairly balanced and fairly, if you will, you know, it, it didn't have a super twisted look to it yet. Mm. So, the next... Uh, this does not have a twisted look to it no, yet, no, no, guys. No, no. This, is, I... this is not twisted at all. Probably have to do some some unicorns and and you know rainbows for the next project to kind of get out of this whole mindset. But yeah, no, this is you know this is this not is quite fine. twisted enough for us. <laughs> um, we wanted to push it a bit further. So, where's my mouse? Uh, this guy here, eh, interesting, but let's uh, go a little bit more crazy. Um, so again, the 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 biggest issue was just symmetry and you know how you know much of the human element you have i mean you have a head in there but you know it's not really mm. so over mm. then you know this uh, guy down here we ultimately arrived at what um was our well i wouldn't say final concept because that's not what the spider looks like but this was a, a pretty refined iteration of uh you know that idea we had at that point so What's going on here is basically you have like a human, like a head, you have the torso, you have an arm, you have another arm that's kind of laying in there. This is the first one, it seems. I mean, I don't know because I, I don't know how far it is that you see a lot of like the details of like getting more hairy towards spider like features. No, absolutely. I mean, this is something where we, you know, this is just sketches yeah, exactly, and just, yeah. you know, just. Basically, throwing out ideas. Like again, there was a whole bunch more than this. For some reason, I can't help it, but like that middle one, like yes, there, kind of looks like a pole dancing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> like upside down, I mean, half spider, half octopus, but then pole that. I don't it, know why pole that. I think this is a lot of like cool features to it. This is very like um, Lovecraftian in a way. Is pretty, you know, there's some yeah, really really yeah. cool things going on there. Um, the problem is, it's a little bit too alien. Uh, for what we had in mind, right? Like this is a little bit too like mm, it's a bit too out there. Uh, we wanted to have it a bit more grounded and a bit more creepy. Um, so you know, you know, we do all these uh, iterations, and then ultimately, you know, once we have something that we think might work, you know, um, we get a more refined, a more fleshed out uh, concept. Mm. So then this guy here, right? So. Again, just to give a little bit of a breakdown, so again, we have the, you know, it's very humanoid, right? Like, you have actually, like, a full human in there. It's just mutated far it's beyond one, yeah. uh, than just a human. So this guy's lying on his back, got his head back, one arm, another arm, one leg, another leg. It's literally a, a full person in there, and then further legs <laughs> kind of poking out. And the idea was, okay... This is sort of like a split thing. Like, there's still something human in this creature that is self aware enough to figure, oh, I do not at all enjoy this. Like, I'm not, uh, what the fuck is going on? Um, well, 
But then the the spider element is really what is, or the, the like the insectoid element is really what it's driving, mm -hmm. and the the person is just along for the ride, if you will. Um, hey, creepy, twisted. I mean, yeah, sure. So taking that, um, we did a first, uh, just really really rough test model, wonky whatever. It sells the idea. Um, just to test this guy. Now, um, it actually, you know, for what we had back then gameplay-wise, mm. this all made sense. Like, this was a bit more, uh, back then the idea was a bit more um, of, a, of a character that would be running away from you, that wouldn't actively engage you, it would just basically be trying to sneak off and, and, and you know, let other um, monsters do its bidding for it. Um, a very, yeah, like a scared thing that would put other things on, on you. On you. Mm -hmm. um, now, the design worked for that, the design supported that, um, however, the actual gameplay wasn't fun. So we had a design that worked for gameplay, but the gameplay wasn't really what we needed at that point. So, okay, there was some iterations done on the actual design, like the game mechanics of the, of yeah, the boss. Of the boss. Um, were, okay, let's make something that is much more aggressive, something that really gets in your face, that attacks you, but then also runs off and, you know, sets up another ambush. Um, well, what you now know as the spider. Um, so that needed to be reflected visually. Now, from this point forward, we didn't do actually any more, um, like... 2D concepting, we basically, from here on out, we, st we started doing 3D um, sketches and, and, and like prototype models. How are we doing time-wise? I mean, we have an hour. Okay, then yeah. I can maybe actually show that. You have a whole hour where you can talk still, so it's all fine. Okay, then I can um, give a little bit of a more in deep depth view at this guy. Oh, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> is happening, is happening? Stuff is happening. So yeah, anyways, like basically we, we, we needed to get something that reflected this more aggressive and more um willing to attack the player um game mechanic, right? Ooh. There we go. Um, and what we did is just a whole bunch of, of iteration on top of this um, original design, mm -hmm. uh, working in 3D, both character art and, and concept art, just going at it, um, trying different things. So, a quick question, because I know this is something that people have asked, like, is a Spider-Man to be a man or a woman? Like, what was the, the human... Undefined. 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 It's literally a person stuck in there. It's mutated beyond recognition. So it's mutated beyond race. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure Can what Can it I... procreate? Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> There's your answer. Um, so, okay, that was that, you know, like that first test thingy. And then... We had something a bit weird and imbalanced feeling, but obviously this is much more spidery. Where you know, just you know, this is more insectoid. You know, with the angle of how the legs work, this became a bit more. The eh. face was also like towards like face. The how do you call it actually? The part. Like, the, the 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 fangs or the fangs, mandibles? Yeah. yeah. Or mandibles works out. Um. So yeah, like okay, this is a bit weird. This is a bit imbalanced. Ultimately, this is the, the guy then that actually got uh, approved. Like, this is the, the 3D sketch that actually got uh, the sign off, um, which is very much mirroring a spider, right? So, yeah. you have like very much inflated um, like abdomen here, uh, consisting of, you know, just in this case, there was still like this kind of membrane on top of it whatever so it's uh, actually the different stages of mutation pretty much 
in a way, like we we went through the whole process and yeah. ultimately then arrived at uh, yeah what you what you now have in the game. Um, but you know a lot of the of the original elements we had in the you know in the design are still reflected in here. Right? So it's very sectoid. You know mm -hmm. we wanted to have something that has human shapes. So again, there is a literal human, but then even the you know those mutated uh, limbs are like okay that's like an, an arm here that just like the hand section of it is very much elongated um same here right i mean you have sort of reminiscent of of, of human um anatomy shapes in there anyways um that was the the the, the concept the 3d concept that was uh, approved um now at that point what we did Sorry, such a big difference. Yeah. Is again like with the first model, we did a test. Um, we actually put that guy in uh, the game to see whether it works. At that point, the um, the the game mechanics have been um, adjusted quite a bit. Uh, we now had something that reflected this whole idea with uh, a more aggressive uh, boss, um, and well, we wanted to see whether now this new design would actually fit that. Um, so we made this, this prototype model and, well, turns out everything works, right? So once that was done, then we, uh, we really fully committed to taking this guy to be the final spider. So I can quickly show you that. Uh, bear with me. So this is now like sort of a more fleshed out version where mm -hmm. like we, you know, everything is kind of cleaned up. Um, obviously this isn't, uh, you know, the final model by a long shot, but this is like just shape wise so, yeah. and whatnot. This is kind of blocked out. What you'll also see is that we ended up going from the actual full human head that we had in there before. Um, you know, it was originally like this guy stuck in there. Oh, actually. That actually answers the question. It was a man. Oh, okay. Well, now we know. But design-wise, this was just like, oh, we want to put a face in there that's kind of screaming out. Uh, so it... technically, it's a guy. I still, I don't know. I always call them women. But, you know, this is really, like, this is not really fear. Like, this is not something that was really... Eh. Thought about to be a guy yeah. or This was just like, yeah. okay, let's... let's. It's a person. Representative of the idea. Yeah, I don't know from the lore side if we have that as an answer. Uh, we'd probably have to talk with Fossey yeah, to figure I that one know. out. Um, anyways. But the design is based on the guys. <laughs> um, and then same as with the, um, you know, what we did with the with the um, head before, we now go in and we just detail the crap out of it. So I'm right now on, like, this is all split into different pieces, mm. whatever, uh, you know, just add more and more detail to it you know on different layers you know we have everything you know this is something this is like this repeating um thing you see we always you know we add large to small we we kind of work in our detail it was a human uh, mutated into a spider rather than mimicking a yeah. human yeah it's, it's basically like okay you have a human that kind of something Something him, happened, and then it morphed Spider -Man and gone grew, wrong. and you know, pretty much. Um, yeah, just add all that fancy detail, and you know you have like, like at this point, there's also like, okay, what are we doing with like, you know, what's the feeling of this? So like for a lot of the, you know, the surfaces we were looking at, um, mole rats, you know. This yeah, yeah, just this, yeah, yeah. It's this really wrinkly skin, right? Um, that's something we wanted to have for for some of these elements here, where you know it's very loose, wrinkly, nasty skin, and then you know much more lean and and you know wings popping out for other areas. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of, of of things then going on where you know we try to figure out, okay, what is this actually? You know, how would this look like? Uh, where is my? There we go. Even more detail. All the detail. So, yeah. 
then ultimately, yeah, something like this. This is then pretty much the spider. The final the high poly model of the spider. I like how you can still see that some are like hands, because obviously you don't get to look at it like the the feet and stuff. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, like, again, like the idea was very much to have like, yeah, there's still some human humanoid yeah. um, things going on, right? You also kind of see the footprint here, right? So this is, you know, kind of diagonal here is the guy, like this is his torso, head, arms, uh, then the two actual human legs, mm -hmm. and then like these two legs here, and um, these two legs here. That will be the ones that kind of you know mutated in. Uh, in a way, you could argue. Actually, never mind. Uh, I'm I'm confusing myself right now with how many legs there are. Um, anyways, there is like there is a, a, a full person in there, and then we just basically add it on top of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. That is the the high resolution model of the spider. Yeah, I know a lot of people are like, is there a new boss coming? Is there a new boss coming? Yes, a new boss is coming and a new AI is coming. We actually had a pretty cool playtest today of the new boss. Am I allowed to say that? I mean... I just said We it. had a... I mean, they, I haven't even done it. Like, the new <laughs> AI is also pretty cool. But yeah, more on that uh, another stream. Unfortunately, not today. But. Um, okay. Oh, I just... Stopped. God damn it. I'm horrible with PowerPoint. Um, oh, so many pictures. Um, so yeah, uh, spider final model, <laughs> and then very similarly to what we did, like on the face, where or on the under duster you saw, where you know texture it in different applications, you ultimately get the the final uh, in game model. So um, pretty. Like pretty the pretty. the hair again is done in the way that you know we discussed before. It's very similar. Um, I think some of these are literally just individual hair on, on a plane mm -hmm. because it's like this kind of stiff spider, you know, I think there's a specific name. Stiff what? Spider like, what? Like the, 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 like the bristles on, the, on like a, like oh, a... Oh, like that, it's a bit yeah. harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, the, you know, a, a lot of the, the, the processes and, and, and workflows, are, you know, apply to different models. It's just... You know, you, you use it differently, right? You you employ these things in different ways. Mm. Yeah, the AI would be like a special, like the armored in a hive. Um, okay. Oh, what happened there? Oh, wait, what? <laughs> what is that? What is he with socks? No, 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 no. Oh Nothing my God. to see here. <laughs> He's so pretty. Now you like it. I do like it. I actually really like it. <laughs> <laughs> um that's how we do our thing that's how we create the characters for this game yeah so uh, i think uh, some of you have questions obviously as much as you have burning questions about anything that's not related to character art please ask your character art related questions uh because that's why he's here he can tell more um Please be in game. Well, who knows? You know, it's Christmas coming up soon. See, look, look, it, it does make the spider very cute. Like, it's a, it's a very festive, happy. Christmas it's a happy spider. spider. <laughs> He's still <laughs> mutated, and he has this rib cage and everything falling out. But it's it has cute cute little socks now and little bows. Um, Merry Christmas! My <laughs> gift is your face. <laughs> Character art question: Did he lose his last sock in the dryer? Um, I just wanted to put the spider socks on where he touches the ground. I could have put a, maybe a glove on the last one. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. So like, um, once we have the new boss, we're gonna do uh, another stream. Yeah. So obviously, we can't share anything yet. Uh, as much as you all want to see the new boss. We will. It will come in due time. Good things, you know, need some time to get prepared until they're done. So we just need some more time. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll let you know when it happens. I mean, there's also a new AI upcoming. Yeah, the new AI. Yeah, yeah. New AI. There is a new AI coming. That's coming um, relatively soon. Mm, yes. But I, I know you guys fair. don't like to. But it, <laughs> 
you know. Let's not put any. Exactly. We're not giving any dates or anything, but like they are in the works and they are both really cool. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that you guys will like them or despise them because they're annoying. <laughs> but no. Um, let me see. Um, any new Hunter models in the works? Right, um, so for the last couple months we've been focusing on other things. Um, female Hunters were a big topic, but we were also working on, you know, new boss, uh, new enemies. Um, I think we've also announced um, some, some specific uh, grunts. I think we've actually kind of had them already yeah, in a stream at some point. Yeah, in the trailer, and we talked about it um, um, on the map. We, we have a couple of things for Hunters, uh, but um, it's not been a, a huge focus uh, lately. Yeah. Like, we've we've been uh, mainly focusing on, on, on other um, aspects. Um, okay, someone asked, where did you start? Uh, were you going to school for this? Did you get a job somewhere? Um, or did you learn it mainly yourself? And what was your first job in the industry? This is more like a personal question, but yeah, that's fine. By all means. Um, so I originally actually started studying philosophy, which is a completely, you know, whoa. Um, but no, like, ultimately, um, I, I figured, okay, I want to do this as a job, as a career. And um, yeah, I studied in Austria, uh, in Salzburg. Ah, Austria, um, why Austria? Because that's where I'm from. Are you Austrian? Yes. I thought you were German. Ah. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I learned something new every day. Gotcha. Oh, I'm Austrian. So yeah, I studied in Salzburg. Oh. Then um, I had my first gig um, in um, in Norway at a company there that you might have heard of, Funcom. They're doing um, MMOs. They've been oh, they're doing, doing a Biomutant right, right now, I think. Uh, I'm not 100% up to speed. Yeah, I think the last thing they were doing was uh, Conan Exiles, which is... Um, yeah, and then... Through... Yeah, I just had no idea. I mean, like, Mini speaks German, so, I mean... I mean, Austrians <laughs> speak German, too, so... Oh, Mutant Years, are, yeah, 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 that's... Um, I need a question. Uh, someone says, where did you study, if I may ask, because he's from Salzburg. Ha! Uh, at the Fachhochschule Salzburg, uh, the University of Applied Sciences in Salzburg. Applied Sciences. Uh, okay, let me see. So, where did you take inspiration from the character tattoos? So, do you do that, or does? Um, those were a fairly lengthy process to really figure out what we were gonna do there. Uh, I did not do these in terms of design. Um, I threw them on on the model, but the actual designs came from Artem. Mm -hmm. uh, Artem Shumnik, a lead concept artist. Um, basically, we wanted to find something that would be, um, well, crude enough to where you could believe that the hunters would actually do them themselves, right? Where it's not this really super fancy, intricate design, but then also interesting enough and, you know, kind of, again, going with that whole supernatural vibe having some of that reflected in the tattoos and yeah that was a bit of a process figuring out specifically what, what we wanted to do with those mm -hmm. um i'm also know that some people uh want to know about customization obviously uh how i don't know if we actually can share anything about it like how detailed it would be but i assume we just start with like having is the lamp getting like light and darker? Mm, I'm not sure. I just, uh, just, just felt sit the in the dark change. here at some point. Yeah, um, um, no customization. Right, so, well, I'm not sure how detailed I can go to. Be yeah, honest. exactly. Like, we can't say too much. I mean, but it's, like, it's, it's, it is it's not going to be as detailed as, you know, the breakdown you saw earlier. Yeah, it's, it it's, would also not be. I don't know. Do we know if we will be able to change skin color? I don't think so, right? Um... Okay, I think this one I can probably answer without getting um, demolished by Dennis. <laughs> um, this is going to be... Okay, you, you, you will basically um, customize the clothing a hunter wears. So yeah. if you have a dude, um, you're going to basically be ch changing what he, he wears. That is the idea right now. This might change. Obviously, nothing is you know completely final, because otherwise it will be out. Um, but yeah. Okay, so um, any other art-related questions? Would you guys ever make an art book? I mean, I think we should. 
one day. Definitely. I would love to do an art book. I think that would be really cool. But it's a lot of work. Like if we did an art book for Rise, well, actually, we didn't. Um, somebody <laughs> did for us, uh, which was good because that, yeah, that is a lot of work. Yeah. Um, would be awesome to have. There's a lot of material that was created for this game that you know hasn't been shown, and you know it could be interesting to see how everything came to be. Um, but yeah, as of no, not that I know of. Then I'm, I'm curious. I mean, I don't know if like was there is there ever been something that you know 100 percent is not going to be in ever or used that you thought was a really cool idea. <laughs> okay, um, I have an answer for this question, but I'm not gonna answer it now. Okay. Not not of any. Um, I don't know if you just made it worse by not saying it. Or... No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, well, we'll never. Nothing bad, but uh, I don't wanna also like. <laughs> like okay, I was specifically thinking about boss ideas. And now, like, the moment I comment on that, it's going to be like, eh. Okay. Like, I don't want to spoil anything because we want to have something, you know. Well, that's why I said something, you know, will never make it in the game. Exactly, because, you know, I, you know, like, if I now say, oh, that's it, then at the very least, okay, people will know, okay, that's not the boss. Okay, Which, yeah, no, already good too much point, spoilers. then don't say it, indeed, <laughs> exactly. Um, do you know if they, What? No, that's not a good question. Okay, we're going to do two more questions um, about character art. So nothing related to anything else. Um, let me see if we can get two good questions. Uh, mm. Show the beard. So we already showed the beard. What is a reasonable poly count for a character in Hunt Showdown? Um, okay, it depends. Um, the Hunters are the most detailed characters we have, because mm -hmm. that's sort of, you know, where a lot of, you know, the ident identification for the player comes from, so we want to make these really cool. Now, um, I think our Hunters range from anywhere between, like, 40,000 to maybe 50, 60,000 mm -hmm. uh, triangles for the most detailed of... Uh, uh, model like the lot zero. Um, obviously, then we have all, all, all kinds of optimization to cut that down if you're further away from the character where you don't need to see all that detail. Now, something like a grunt um, or or something of that kind, you know, simpler, much simpler, yeah. you know, less important enemy, you know, that could be anything uh, between like 15,000 um, to, you know, 30,000. Awesome. Um, I just tuned in. Sorry if I missed this, but how long does it normally take to sculpt a high poly model like the spider in ZBrush and texture it in Substance? And this is always a very, very tricky answer to uh, a question to answer. Just to make different iterations. It's just yeah, there's so much iteration going on usually. Mm. Like it's very rare that you get, you know, from start to finish without uh, changing things. Like even just you know looking at the spider design and how that character evolved, there was so much iteration going on. Where yeah, then it's also you know, like let me actually quickly go back here. Um, like we will do our oh where is it? our little uh, prototype model right, and we dropped it in the game, and well basically at that point we're not gonna do any more work on it until it's been finally approved and you know everybody is uh, happy with where we're going uh, because if there's any problems well we would just have wa wasted our time mm -hmm. so you know there's pauses in there uh, you know you you start focusing on other things for, for a little bit um it's it's tricky like usually okay just to give a ballpark figure I would say for you know if we really just uh, you know, sit down and you know start to finish without any distractions work on a character uh, anywhere between six weeks for you know something still reasonably complex to um, if you you know go really crazy all out over the top uh, like some of the characters we did on Rise uh, can take you know ten weeks eleven weeks twelve weeks mm -hmm. it's really dependent on what it is how much iteration there is so it's 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 a tricky one. 
Okay. Uh, last question then from Gregor. Do you skip bash sets for inspiration when seeking for care design ideas, as in while well, prototyping concept designs? We use anything we can get our hands on. I mean, basically, a lot of the, the um, uh, you know, design process, it doesn't matter how fancy it is as long as it sells the idea, right? And in, in that stage, um, whatever works, right? Like, you, you kit bash, you just, um, like, on the spider, like, you have that head that I just took from some other character and I just plugged it in there, and, you know, that's what we went with. I like the Christmas spider. I do like the Christmas <laughs> spider. I love all the little socks. I do like that he has like he's just missing one of the pairs that could have been on that other leg. It's just gone. Oh, you know, a symmetry, a little bit of. I know. <laughs> Spot. He's just bad with getting his socks together. It's, well, well, I say well, he's one of those guys that's like there's always a missing sock. In the okay. We should just put the sock somewhere in the level as an Easter egg, and that will just be just in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, but yeah, that is pretty much it for today. Uh, if there's one thing you want to say, like a last a close up or whatever, uh, you can. Do. Thank you so much for for um, you know listening. Um, you know, I hope you really enjoyed the stream, and hope you you know either you know figured out a little bit and learned something about how we do our job, um, or at the very least, you know, saw some cool stuff that that was nice to look at. So yeah. Thank you. And. Uh, I'm sure we'll see him back for another future stream at some point for like, you know, new boss, female hunters, stuff like that. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, obviously, you can always rewatch the VOD if you've missed a stream. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. So have a good day. Right. Bye. Bye.